GPU simulation improvements. In this video, we will look at GPU simulation improvements. Collision handling in GPU simulations has been greatly improved in this release. This outfit has a particle distance of 5 and has multiple layers of patterns. In 2024.2, you can see that the same garment is simulated more reliably. Collision between patterns and patterns, and patterns and avatars is now simulated more accurately. We have also updated the simulation menu. Looking at the simulation type, animation, stable, which was used to record animations, has been added. Underneath the simulation types, there are now subtypes for both CPU and GPU simulation. This means you can now set the CPU and GPU simulation options for each of the normal, fitting, and animation types. Like before, the GPU settings will display as an icon with an empty arrow to indicate which is running. From version 2024.2, we have improved the accuracy of GPU simulation so that CPU simulation results and GPU simulation results are almost identical. As a result, it is now possible to do stable, complete, and fast work using GPU simulation. Next, let's compare the GPU and CPU simulations. By looking at the statistics in the bottom left corner of the 3D window, you can see information about the patterns used and the FPS rate. For the mesh, we have over 110,000 vertices in total. We'll start by simulating with normal default. The GPU is on the left, the CPU is on the right, and we'll show you a live recording with no speed adjustments. You can see the huge difference in speed, but the shape being simulated is almost identical. To check the stability of the GPU simulation's collision handling, let's pinch after simulation. Even though it is a three-layer pattern, the simulation is stable. Next, when animating a denser garment, GPU simulation allows for faster recording. This is the speed at which the animation was recorded in real time. Since this is a GPU simulation, note that the speed may vary depending on your graphics card but it is significantly faster than recording with the previous CPU simulation. Note that at this time, GPU simulation does not apply to trim, soft body simulation. In previous versions, simulation information was saved in the project file, but from this version, GPU simulation information is not included when saving garment, project, and simulation properties files. Trim simulation with collision. In this video, we will look at trim simulation with collision. First, a simulation option has been added to the trim right-click menu. Three menu options have been added, freeze, activate, and deactivate. The biggest update to this feature is that when trim is activated, it will be simulated along with the pattern and will be affected by the gravity. You can move the trim by pinching it during the simulation. For trims such as buckles and rings that have small holes, the mesh can often clip through them. To prevent this, lower that pattern's additional collision thickness to facilitate stable simulation. While simulation is active, you can adjust the trim weight in the trim style property window under weight value. When you freeze the trim, the position of the trim will be locked where it is in the 3D window.
When you deactivate a trim, it will be excluded from any simulation calculations. The entire mesh body of the trim now has collision applied. You can also adjust the stiffness of trims. When a trim is activated, the stiffness value is active in the object properties of each individual trim. To represent a trim that is made of a soft material, lowering the stiffness value will cause the trim to bend according to the simulation. Advanced pinching with soft selection. In this video, we will look at Advanced pinching with soft selection. For control of the cloth and detailed simulation, a soft selection function has been added as an advanced pinching option. In order to activate soft selection, the Select and Move tool has to be activated while simulation is active. By right-clicking 3D window, you can find Advanced Pinching option. You can also press Shift-E as a shortcut. When you activate the Advanced Pinching option, a new window will pop up on screen. There's two different sections on this pop-up window. On top, you'll see a range section, providing options for fall-off shape, fall-off distance, and fall-off power. By default, the distance indicator is turned on, and you will see a selection range as two concentric circles. The inner circle indicates fall-off power, and the outer circle indicates fall-off distance. Let's toggle on the display weights option. When display weights is activated, the selection range will be displayed in green. Falloff shape provides bump and linear options. Bump has relatively wide range of selection range. Linear, on the other hand, has a tighter range of selection. Let's adjust the falloff distance and falloff power to the max value to see a clearer visual difference. With a linear option, the range selected is tighter. With a bump option, on the other hand, you can see that the wider range is selected. I will set everything back to default values. Distance measure provides two different options, surface and straight. When you set it to surface, the selection is happening along the surface from the center point of your indicator. Your selection is limited to a single layer pattern. When straight is selected, you can select everything in the 3D space where distance indicator covers. This allows you to select multiple layers in the scene. When Limit to Selected Patterns box is checked, your selection is limited within a selected pattern, no matter what you choose in Distance Measure option. This will be useful when you want to fix the clothes that are sticking each other as you simulate. GoZ Plugin Improvements. In this video, we will look at the GoZ Plugin Improvements. You can download GoZ Plugin for your operating system in the GoZ Manual page by clicking Install GoZ in the Help tab on the main menu. Once installation is done, now you should see a GoZ tab in the main menu. When exporting to ZBrush, go to Main Menu, GoZ, and click Export to ZBrush. The exporting ZBrush window pops up and you will see that it's divided into two different areas. The object area provides options to select and deselect avatars, patterns, trims, and scene and props to export. Unweld and weld options is for whether you want your sewing lines to be detached or attached. You also have options for exporting thickness of your garments. In the basic area, you could choose which scales you want your patterns to be exported. I will export. You could see how we have each item with different names in the subtool menu, and polygroups are automatically assigned. In the Import GoZ window, you have Load Type, Object Type, and Scale options. In Load Type, you have the option to select Open to import your items to a new project file, 
or Add to import your items into existing project file. The object type option has avatar, trim, garment, and scene and props options. You are choosing whether you want to treat your object as an avatar, trim, garment, or scene and props. Lastly, you have scale options to choose which scale you want your avatar to be exported to. Here we import a character from ZBrush to Marvelous Designer. There is Go Z All and Visible buttons. I will click Go Z to simply export my character. Since we have set object type as avatar, we are going to treat this character mesh as an avatar in Marvelous Designer. Add thickness option. We will look at the improvements to the add thickness option. All thickness-related options have been grouped under one category named Geometry, providing easier access than previously. Adding an Extrusion option to set the extrusion direction of your pattern's thickness and Visibility option allows you to turn on and off the visibility of certain faces of your pattern. Set Garment Display option to Wireframe on Monochrome thick, to identify the thickness and other geometry options. By adjusting the value on additional thickness option, you can increase or decrease the thickness of your pattern. There are three different options in extrusion direction, backward, forward, or both. Forward will give you the additional thickness to the front side, normal side. Both will give thickness to both front and back side of your pattern. Backward will give you the additional thickness to the back side, flipped normal side. Under extrusion direction, you have options to choose the visibility of front face, back face, and lastly the seam face. When you turn off the front face checkmark, you will not see the front part of your cloth. And when you turn off the back face checkmark and turn the front face back on, you only get to see the front part of your cloth. And when you turn on the seam face checkbox, it will show you the faces on overlapping sides on the sewn line. Resolution is directly related to the resolution of the geometry. The higher the number, the better quality the geometry you will get. Curvature only works when you have enough resolution on the geometry. If you lower the value of curvature when you don't have enough resolution, you lose curvature and the geometry will appear flat. Turning on the double-sided option will give double-sided geometry to your pattern. For more information, check out this YouTube video. Duplicate pins to symmetric pattern. Going forward, pins placed on one half of a symmetrically linked pattern can be applied to the other side. First, duplicate the pattern as shown in the screen and create pins with the pin box tool. You can apply it in the 3D window based on vertices along the line. You can also set it in the 2D pattern window. Here we double clicked on the desired line to create a pin. Right click on the selected pin and select duplicate to symmetric pattern. You can see that the pin placement is now symmetrical. This can be very useful in situations where you need to pin a symmetrical pattern. Adjust joint size. In the 3D window, select Show Avatar Joints while in Avatar View Mode. The Avatar Joints window appears in the top right corner with the Avatar Joints. The default value is 8. Decreasing the numeric value reduces the size of the selected joint with a minimum value of 1. Increasing the numeric value will increase the size of the joint. The maximum value is 20. Click the Refresh button to revert back to the default value of 8. Hide Selected Joint. You can select some of the avatar's joints to hide them. In the 3D Display options in the 3D window, select Show Avatar Joints to make the joints appear. 
After selecting any number of avatar joints, right-click and select Hide Joint. All of the joints on the right are hidden, as shown. This is based on the selected joints. To make them all visible again, right-click and select Show All Joints. All joints will now be visible again. Improved Quad Remeshing The optimized quad mesh feature has been improved. First, we will change the mesh type to quad, optimized, to show the previous version of the quad mesh. As you can see, the mesh automatically generated strange quad shapes where they weren't needed. So when I clicked on Render Quality as shown on the screen, you can see that the mesh is now angled unnecessarily. Now we have a much more neatly aligned quad mesh. No more unnecessarily placed quads. Turning on Quality Render does not create shadows from angled meshes. As we can see on the screen, compared to the previous version, we now get much better quality quad meshes quickly and easily. Closed End option for piping. The ends of added piping can now be closed. For this example, we will select the piping tool in the 3D window and create it on the end of the chair. If you check the property editor window of the created piping, you will see that you can select start and end from the finishing options. You will notice that the end will change to look like the real thing. Let's adjust the width and particle distance values to make it more natural. We can select the Edit Piping tool to modify the length value and see that the shape remains natural. We now have a more natural looking piping end treatment for a variety of clothing and furniture. Seam Tape Extension option. You can now apply and use Seam Taping Extension as an option. First, select the Seam Taping option in the 2D pattern window. In the 2D pattern window, you can see that it is color-coded. You can set Extend, Start, and End options. Note that Start and End can be distinguished by the direction displayed in the 2D pattern window. You can set different options individually for the selected seam tape. To better show this, we will adjust the seam taping value to 20 millimeters and show the change again. If we set both start and end to to seam taping, we can see that they don't encroach on each other. When set to three types, none, to outline, to seam taping, none option is does not extend. To outline option is extend to the pattern outline. To seam taping option is extends to the seam taping area of the intersected line you can see that the seam tape segment point changes. For more information, see the manual on Marvelous Designer homepage.